I think it is a safe assumption that most of us would like to spend $1,000 on a speaker and get $5,000 performance. But from my experience, I believe you get what you pay for in the speaker world. Now, I'm not so sure about the amplifier world anymore, but today we are talking about speakers. For sure, the best value for the money is going the DIY route, do it yourself. For those of you who follow me, you know, one of my audio buddies is Mr. DIY. I gave him that nickname because he has built his own speakers. His current speakers can easily compete with high-end $20,000 speakers, and it did not cost him anywhere close to that to build. Of course, DIY can be easy and it can be hard. It is simply more than just putting a few drivers into the cabinet, but if you get it right, the reward is quite big. The problem with DIY is getting it right. And I guess just like any commercial product, you have good DIY and bad DIY products. Now recently, I made a video on my modified Focal 836W speakers. The person who modified it built a new crossover for it and also worked on improving the cabinet. The end result is you have a speaker that although originally cost $4,000, can now compete with $10,000 plus speakers. So, the idea of DIY and modifying speakers has always interested me. Now, one creative sound solution reached out to me asking if I would be interested in reviewing the speaker kit. I was extremely excited because I wonder, would I get $4,000 performance by spending only $1,500? I requested their top of the line Crichton 2T DX speaker. And the idea behind the company is you get a kit and you build the speakers yourself, which as a result saves you a lot of money. After all, you save on the labor. Now, before I go into the main topic, let me tell you a story. There was one email I got from CSS that was very interesting. They told me they have this client that told them at times that client would prefer his CSS speaker with a subwoofer over his Wilson Sabrina. For those of you who don't know, Wilson Sabrina, these speakers are over $10,000. I reached out to the client, which happened to be a subscriber of mine, and the email I got from him was very special. He sent me some photos and told me why the CSS speakers are special to him. He has built it with his children, and he wanted to teach them they can get good stuff, good quality stuff, too, by building it themselves. You don't always have to buy commercial finished product to get the good stuff. As a father myself, I can appreciate the lesson. Now, this exchange was done before I received my speakers. So at the time, I have not yet heard the CSS speakers, but in my head, I was telling myself there must be something special with these CSS speakers. Now, the logical me knows that I don't expect an affordable speaker to outperform a high-end speaker. Well, objectively. In that sense, my expectations were realistic and I had a theory. And so once I power up the CSS speakers, I was like, oh, I see. So today, let's talk about the Crichton T 2T DX speaker. So before we begin, in case you did not know, a few of my audio buddies and I also have a passion for photography. In case being an audiophile has not drained your wallet dry, and you are looking for another hobby, another expensive hobby, you can give photography a try. The reason I'm mentioning this today is that the sponsor for today's video is Skillshare. Yes, I get to earn coffee money, Skillshare an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. With thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow whatever your creativity takes you. 
Now, given I am interested in photography, I took a look at their courses and I found this course from Jessica Kobesi, which was quite interesting. Now, the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So you can start exploring your creativity today. So back to the CSS. I wanted the best of the best, best, best from them. So I received the Crichton 2TDX with superior upgraded parts. It costs 1474 before finishing. With the kit, you get everything you need to build a speaker and you can finish it any way you want. For those who don't know, a speaker's finishing is a big factor in the final selling price. If you look at their $700-ish Crichton 1TDX speakers, the price difference between the finished and unfinished versions is over a thousand bucks. The reason I got a finished pair instead of a kit is because I told them, look, man, I don't have time to build it myself. And, you know, I have never sold her ever. Now, these speakers are rated from 30 hertz to 20 kilohertz with a nominal pit impedance of 6 ohms and a sensitivity of 90 dB. I did ask them to send me the measurements so for the speakers and let me put it up on screen here. To describe how the CSS sounds, top end is very smooth. Some might find it a bit too rolled off and not detailed enough. Interestingly, usually I find rolled off speakers have a hint of dryness, but in this case, it does not. It, it is still somewhat extended despite it not being hyper detailed, nor does it sparkle like other speakers I own. I find the smoothness on the top end, affecting the mids, which is also really smooth and warm. There's definitely good body in the mids. Bass is the star for me, and it is fast, deep, and nuanced. Instrument separation and soundstage is good to very good, which I'll come back later. Now, it does stretch us slightly beyond the speakers, the soundstage on both sides, and you can create a holographic 3D soundstage behind the speakers. In short, this is how I would describe the sound, and I'll break it down further. With the glowingly positive reviews online, is it all hyped? Is this a good speaker? Well, let me ask you, what does good means to you? For those of you who follow me, you know, for the sake of easier discussion, I like to categorize speakers into analytical speakers and musical speakers. Analytical speakers would be focal speakers, right? Where you can hear the pin dropping, effortless detail, and sparkles like no tomorrow. With musical speakers, by my definition, are slightly rolled off on the top end so you don't spend too much time analyzing the music, but rather you just listen to the music. For example, my Sonus Faber toy speakers are what I consider musical speakers. Let me tell you a story. I remember one night my audio buddy and Mr. Cantor, like me and him, were A-B testing a pair of Focal against the Sonus Faber toy. And after the audition, Mr. Kanto was so impressed that he borrowed the Sonus Faber toy home. You see, when we switch from the Focal speakers to the Sonus Faber toy, we notice suddenly everything becomes quieter. We're no longer constantly bombarded by information and we're saying things like, man, this is so much more relaxing. For those of you who don't know us, like because you don't follow me, we are the biggest Focal fanboy on the planet. I have owned all the Focal up to the Sopra 2, and also after trying 90 pairs of speakers at my home, I realized both analytical and musical speakers can equally be engaging, and not one is better than the other. Some people might associate the word analytical as a negative word, but for me, it is just a description. I personally am more into the analytical speakers, but I can appreciate musical speakers. So, to answer the question, is it good? If you are looking for a musical presentation where the emphasis is on long listening sessions, it is excellent. If you're looking for a speaker where you can push the volume without getting listening fatigue, it is excellent. In my case, it took me a while to get used to the presentation. And why did I take the time? After trying, over, like, after trying many speakers, I learned one thing. Every speaker has something to offer and you need to give it a chance to really understand it. You know, a bit like, I like Chinese food. 
And if I try French food and I don't like it as much, it does not mean it is not good or not as good. It means I need to spend more time trying it to appreciate it. Speakers for me are the same. That is why you see me using these CSS speakers a lot in the B-rolls of my other videos recently because I spent a lot of time listening to these speakers. I wanted to get it. What do these speakers have to offer? Let me give you a tip. If a speaker impresses you in the first three minutes, it can be a red flag. So after spending weeks with the CSS, eventually I came to this realization. If you are a Focal speaker lover, these are not for you. But if you are a Focal speaker lover, these are also for you if you're looking for a second speaker and wanted a completely different presentation. Come on guys, I bet most of you have more than one pair of speakers at home. Let's do an exercise. Put in the comments what speakers you have at home today. If I had to guess, the subscriber who had the, uh, those Wilson speakers, part of the reason why he likes these speakers is that it is the other extreme compared to the Sabrina speakers. You have your moment for analytical listening and you have your moment for you know just enjoying the music. What I realized with these CSS speakers is because the top end is not like the main star, I find myself focusing on the mid-range and the bass. So that brings me to why I like these speakers. Now, because these speakers are not hyper detailed, I find myself noticing less the saliva of the singer, the exchange of the breath. And this is great if you're looking more for that euphonic smooth mid-range with almost no sibilance. You know that s -s 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 sound? You don't, you, you don't have it with the speakers. Also, because I am not drawn to the top end, I find myself focusing on the lower mid and bass. This is where the speaker rocks. The bass is nuanced, fast, dynamic, and digs pretty deep. It can pressurize my room pretty good, and I can feel the chest pounding force when I push the volume. With the right electronics, of course, and speaker positioning. I see that airy soundstage forming at the back of the speakers, with, especially with tube amps. Now, to get it to sound good for a focal lover like me, I spend weeks mixing and matching electronics. If there's one negative I can say about these speakers, this is a smooth sounding speaker, so you need a bit of volume to bring it to life. In the beginning, man, I would listen to it at low volume, driving it with my Macintosh MAC6700, and I find myself easily falling asleep. I had to get my more analytical gear back from my audio buddies to balance out the smoothness of these speakers. The UN S8 plus my Moon 34i integrated amp was a good match. Now, for those of you who don't know, the UN S8 and 34i Moon are hyper detailed and analytical. With the CSS speakers, it had a good balance. Another good pairing is the Wilsonton R800 plus my Exasound E28 DAC with the JCAT linear power supply plus Stack Audio Link 2 network bridge. The key with that pairing was the Stack Audio because that streamer does wonders to transient and leading edges. I, well, I use it not as a streamer, but I use it as a reclocker and a USB jitter remover and it brings a lot of clarity to the presentation. Now, I'll review it someday, and guys, wait for that review. Fantastic with the CSS speakers. Finally, the same setup as the Wilsonton R800i, but with the Doge 10. That setup is OMG. With my modified Doge 10 running KT120 tubes, the bass was fast, controlled, strong, dynamic, and detailed. Man, it is the detail in the bass that really impressed me. I hear things I don't usually hear with entry-level speakers. I also realized, man, these speakers are not so easy to drive as the specs suggested. To get real dynamics out of them, you need a bit of juice. Because in the beginning, I was like, uh, the dynamics is just okay. Why did that cheap audio man tell me these Crichtons would punch me in my face? But combined with the Doge 10, listening to the Wonder Woman album, I was like, WTF. This is not what a $1,000, $400 speaker can do. With the Doge 10 and Wilson R800, on top of that, 
you will get your airy 3D soundstage if you pull those speakers away from the wall. Now, of course, I did pair it with electronics that are a bit more expensive. But my point is this. These speakers can scale up with more capable electronics. Not all speakers can do that. You can either do like me, pair it with very revealing front end, or you can go the other way, which is to pair it with smooth sounding front end gear. Both can be fantastic depending on your taste. So let me wrap it up here. Now, some of you have told me you are planning to buy it and you're waiting for my review. Let me ask you one thing. What is the most important thing you have to be aware of if you plan to buy these speakers? They are good, but if your first answer is not, these speakers are very smooth and not hyper detailed, you might be not happy when you first power it up. You must really understand this point. For me, this smooth sounding characteristic is a very good thing if this is what you're looking for. So don't buy it just because many YouTubers say it is good, but because this is what you want in a speaker. Hours of listening. Never have to worry about listening fatigue. Not many speakers go for this kind of voicing these days, right? These days, there are so many analytical speakers out there that I, I don't come across many musical speakers. Today is all about resolution and hyper detail. And although I am one of those who prefer that kind of sound, like a lot of detail, I find my taste changing recently. And I notice I appreciate now both equally. I guess this is what happens when you get old. One final thing. I have heard from a few people that CSS gives excellent customer service. And I think this is one thing worth calling out. And with that said, I think that's it. I will see you next time.